Today I'm building a brand spanking new gaming PC for my old friend Mike. Mike's a really good friend of mine, we went to high school together. His PC right now is complete dog shit. I think I helped him pick out the parts for it some eight or nine years ago. I didn't build it, he did all that himself, which if you take a look at his PC in the video that I did on it recently, uh, you can see that I clearly had nothing to do with that build. But check out that video if you missed it, it's pretty fun. Mike has not gamed in years, so I'm hoping that this system will jumpstart uh, his his interest back into gaming and he can squat up with us at some point. Outside of playing games, Mike's pretty much just gonna be using this for work, random productivity tasks, day-to-day, -day, like, you know, Microsoft Office, web browsing, so nothing too intensive. Gaming's really gonna be the only demanding task uh, for this PC. I haven't added up the total cost of these parts, but I'm gonna guesstimate anywhere between fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars is more or less the budget that we're looking at for this PC. I could be off by fifty or a hundred bucks either way. So this is gonna be a fairly high-end system. Let's take a look at the parts. This video is brought to you by the EVGA RTX 2060 KO. The card features 6 gigs of GDDR6 memory, a quiet dual fan design, and full metal backplate for added rigidity. Fast yet affordable, the RTX 2060 KO is built on NVIDIA's Turing architecture, allowing users to experience RTX on for next level realism in games. Click on the link below to learn more. Starting with the CPU. Now this is a 10th gen Core i5 10600K that we're using, six cores and 12 threads. It is overclockable because it is a K-SKU. And may I just say, I'm gonna point out that this is the first Intel-based system that I've put together in a very long time. I cannot even remember the last time I built a system using an Intel chip. Um, so I'm kind of excited. Now based on my earlier testing, if you guys remember, I did find that some of these Comet Lake S processors weren't the best value, uh, just when it came to price to performance. I like the Core i9-10900K flagship part, um, just not a great not a great value overall compared to the competition. But the 10600K is one of those chips in the, in the family that uh, we can actually somewhat recommend because it is a fairly decent value, especially if you do plan to overclock it, uh, you can really get some nice gains and frame rates if gaming is your top priority, which in this case, uh, it is. So as much as I love Ryzen and AM4, uh, I love competition more, and I'm pretty excited to be building something a little different today. We also have a Kraken in no particular order here, an NZXT Kraken Z63, 280 millimeter liquid AIO with a fancy little uh, digital display there on the pump. We also have an ASUS ROG Strix RTX 2070 Super. Yeah, thank you ASUS for hooking up all the ASUS products today. Um, this build would not be possible without you guys, but man, this is such a beautiful card. Super cool and quiet. Uh, we're gonna be mounting this, well, I'll save the, that bit for later. We've got eight gigs of GDDR6 memory, uh, the full suite of RTX technologies like DLSS 2.0 and ray tracing and uh, some nice RGB lighting on this triple fan design cooler. Uh, we are probably not going to be using the lighting. Well, it's either going to be just solid white, something really minimal, or I'm going to turn it off because Mike is a very simple guy. He's very practical. One of the few things I like about him. And so we're not going to go crazy with RGB today. This is more or less going to be a blacked out sort of matte black stealth build uh, with very minimal or no RGB. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do white LEDs or just turn them off, but either way, it's going to be very, very minimal. I think Mike will really like that. We also have some Asia horse cables for about 30 or 40 bucks. You get a set for pretty much your entire system, including uh, your graphics card, your CPU, whoops, graphics card, eight pin CPU and 24 pin uh, ATX motherboard cables, all pretty much uh, included in that pack. By the way, guys, links to all this stuff that we're talking about today can be found in the description as always. For power, we've got an ROG Strix 650 watt unit from ASUS, 80 plus gold with a 10 year warranty. That is pretty impressive and definitely instills confidence in the product. Uh, very nice matte black finish here as well. It does have this red line, but you're not going to see that in the case. And we also have a fully modular design with uh, supposedly a pretty quiet fan. So uh, that's nice. 650 watts should also be plenty for our needs today too. ASUS ROG Strix Z490E gaming motherboard. Uh, the fact that this is my first Intel build in quite some time also means that uh, it's my first time building with a Z490 board. We've got an eight phase VRM that's using a parallel power stage design. So that effectively gives us 16 phases 14 dedicated to the CPU and two for the memory. Also, I hope these VRM heat sinks are as big as they look. That would be sweet. I think this board's gonna be a pretty good overclocker just uh, based on how everything's looking so far. This little uh, heat pipe that's kind of going through, making a U shape from uh, the top left and bottom heat sinks here. So it's kind of all connected, uh, which is gonna help with heat dissipation. We also have a 16 gigabyte kit of Crucial's ballistics gaming memory. We got two eight gig modules here at 3200 speed, nice matte black finish, uh, no RGB. They do have an RGB version of this, but again, Mike, Mike doesn't care about that. So why spend money on it? And we also have a Western Digital WD Blue SN550 NVMe M.2 SSD. This is actually not going home with Mike. It's gonna stay with me. This is my drive. I'm just using it for the, uh, the purpose of this build because Mike has his own storage 
storage uh, that he's actually upgraded since he purchased the uh, the system way back then. Uh, he has a fairly decent BX200, I think, crucial uh, two terabyte SSD and some other drives he's gonna be populating the system with. So uh, this is just for the sake of the build, uh, but a very nice SSD that deserves to be mentioned anyway. It packs in some solid middle of the road performance for an NVMe drive. 2400 megabytes per second read, uh, one terabyte. It also comes in 250 and 500 gig, I believe. And it's very affordable for what it is. Uh, it's PCIe Gen 3. Uh, no need to go Gen 4 because that's not fully supported on Z490 just yet, particularly because there's no hardware support for it on Comet Lake S. We'll have to wait for uh, the next generation of Intel CPUs for that. Uh, our case. So um, this is actually sort of what inspired this build, apart from wanting to help out Mike, was that I was supposed to have a, uh, a video on launch day when this case launched. This is the, the Fractal Design Define 7 Compact, but things got pushed back. I was waiting for some other items here in shipping because, you know, the world's on fire, no big deal. But I'm definitely going to try to comment on the build experience with this case as I go about uh, the assembly here because it's a brand new case and I'm pretty pumped because I completely missed the launch of the uh, the Define 7, the, the standard Define 7 that, that came out earlier this year. I've never even worked with a Define 7 case in any capacity, so this is my first experience with it. Like I said, this is the compact version. It still supports ATX motherboards. It's just been slimmed down externally. Uh, the frame's a lot smaller, so it's kind of more, more or less the same size of a Meshify C, it looks like, uh, but still allows you uh, full-size hardware support, water cooling support, and things like that. This comes with two fans, one at the front, one at the rear. I'm gonna remove the one at the front because we gotta make room for our 280 millimeter rad, and then I'm probably gonna put that fan up top. Of course, to do that, uh, I'll have to remove this panel and swap it with the alternate panel that came included with the case, which is pretty cool. Got all that uh, ventilation right there. It's nice, nice and open. Last but not least, we've got a vertical PCIe bracket from Cable Mod so that we can mount our graphics card vertically. We don't have to worry about GPU sag. That'll be a non-issue. Additionally, the thing I like, I really like about this uh, bracket is that it kind of positions the GPU uh, more recessed inside of your case so that the fans on the graphics card aren't brushing up against the panel so they're not nearly as starved for air. I think that's about how those on the pump, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked. I think this thing's gonna turn out beautifully because, you know, I'm building it after all. And again, if you want buy links to any of the stuff you see here, you can find it in the description. Full transparency, they are affiliate links, so I do get a small kickback if you happen to use one of them and buy something on Amazon. So first things first, we're gonna start working on the motherboard, but really quick, I wanted to take a closer look at the VRM here just to give you guys a shot of what's going on. So there's our, our power delivery. 16 phases, and I can confirm that the VRM heat sinks are pretty chunky. Nice little thin arrangement here on the back, actually on both sides, so that you get some additional surface area for added dissipation. Uh, here's our little fan bracket for the, uh, I don't even know what size this is, 40 millimeter, something like that. So I think it would just kind of go, I don't know how it would mount, something like this. It's even PWM, four pin, uh, with a dedicated header on the motherboard right there by the eight pin EPS connector. Uh, it's a eight plus four pin, by the way. So additional power delivery, a bit more stable for overclocking. I'm not gonna do any crazy overclocking here because it's not my system A, and Mike doesn't really know uh, how to overclock B. So if something goes wrong with it, if it ends up not being stable, then uh, he won't know how to fix it. So we probably don't need this. Like I said, Mike's not doing any super intensive tasks on this PC besides gaming. Let's install our 10600K here. And uh, I guess I did put together a Z490 test bed, but this is certainly the first build that I put together from start to finish, like a serious full-blown system uh, using an Intel chip in quite some time. There we go. Now before we do memory, I'm actually going to install the, the pump on our AIO first because I feel like it's a bit easier when the memory sticks aren't in the way. So let's go ahead and get our LGA 115X backplate. Aren't you a sight for sore eyes? All right, I just put the backplate on. It was a two-hand job, so I had to put the camera down, but you can see you got the threaded holes now peeking out. We can go ahead and get our mounting screws. That is the wrong screw. Never mind. This top left screw is always kind of a pain to screw in because the VRM heat sinks are in the way. I guess it's a small price to pay for your board not melting. Okay, let's pop this guy off. Pre-applied thermal paste, so we don't have to worry about that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and place it over the CPU. I'm just gonna keep it held down, even pressure, and I need two hands again. I typically screw down two opposite corners first, and then I go for the others. Screwdrivers are handy for this sort of thing. All right, that's good. Now we can go for our memory. So like it is with most boards, if you've got two sticks in a four slot board, it's generally slots two and four that you wanna populate. Sometimes it's different, very rarely, but uh, just check the manual if you're unsure and you should be good to go there. Did I get the notch right? Okay, good. Don't wanna break our sticks. So far, so good. It's looking really nice so far. Nice, matte black, everything. MKBHD would be proud and very minimal RGB. Everything looks really nice though, like the style of everything. Like I really like these sticks and of course, 
the Kraken coolers are always pretty sexy. Now we can move on to our radiator fans. I guess we could have done this before we mounted the, the water block, but this works too. I actually kind of like doing it in this order first because once the water block's on, you can sort of see how the hose is gonna behave. So you can determine how the radiator is gonna mount to your case and that'll let you know how to mount your fans. So assuming we're mounting it to the front of the chassis, fans are probably gonna to wanna to go, I'd say put them on the left side. They should be mounted as intake, so that's good. And you want the fan cables uh, towards the back, facing the back. You don't want them like this where they're visible when I'm towards the back. Uh, one thing to bear in mind is that uh, if you happen to be mounting your radiator and the corresponding radiator fans on opposite sides of the case's fan mounting plate or area, you obviously don't want to mount your fans directly to the radiator like we're doing now. Uh, instead, you, you need to have the case ready and make sure that your order of operations is correct when screwing. So, you, you know, for example, you might be threading through the fans first, then through the case, and then finally into the radiator. Or actually, yeah, it, that's probably the only example that <laughs> realistically makes sense. So uh, just make sure you know what you're doing and how you're screwing things in before you screw them. That's, that's just a fact of life, really. All right, so before we mount all this into the case, we have one more thing to do, uh, technically speaking, which is the M.2 drive. Our NVMe drive uh, needs to get mounted to the motherboard, but after thinking about it, I'm not gonna use this. The reason being is that uh, it's gonna be just too much of a pain to have to uninstall this once we've got the GPU in, especially since it's gonna be mounted to this vertical bracket, which is definitely gonna get in the way of uh, either of these slots that we have here. So I'm just gonna omit this from the build, and if we need to get into Windows to change any RGB settings, or anything like that. I'll just connect a, a simple two and a half inch SSD uh, with some SATA cables. Okay, define seven compacts. Show me what you're made of. Uh, remember, I have not ever used or seen or touched a define seven uh, compact or not. So this is all new to me. This is all this, this sort of pattern grill ventilation stuff is new. These tabs are completely new. How does that even work? So it looks like, okay, that's just for the power supply bracket. So bear with me here. Oh, okay, nice. It just pops off like that. I like how, I like that design. Completely toolless, you know, it's plastic, but it feels pretty sturdy and it kind of just sort of relies on pressure. It's got these push tabs, these push pins, I should say, um, one on each side there, and it just drops down so you can pull it out. And that's what I said. And there it is. As you can see, this is the dark tempered glass version. Uh, they do have a lighter tempered glass option if you want to be able to see inside your system a bit more, which would have been nice in this build because we won't have much uh, lighting going on inside to really illuminate things, but that's okay. Might as well pop this side off too while we're at it. Got some sand damping material on this side, very nice. I'm gonna keep the plastic wrap on certain things as long as I can uh, until the build's done more or less, but you can just see right here, we've got some high quality aluminum on the front panel. It's not plastic like we've seen with a lot of other defined cases. Feels very high quality, looks high quality, uh, probably super prone to fingerprints as well though. So keeping the plastic on for now. Got a dust filter, full length, goes pretty much the full length or full depth of the case. Let's see how it goes back in, one-handed test, oh, okay. So slides in and out, pretty easy. That's what she said. So this kind of looks like a lot of defined cases, but you can see that they've actually increased the amount of ventilation on the sides. The openings are much bigger than, uh, than previously, so that's good. And unlike some defined cases that uh, use this front panel as a door that swings out either side, this is just like a push pin option that pulls off like that, like some other other cases. Sand damping material here as well, and it looks like you could probably very easily dust these off. These side dust filters are actually removable. You've got these tabs, you just push up on them, and they pop out like that. Very nice and easy to clean. Okay, my bad, I thought this was a 120, it's actually a 140, that's even better. So you've got a 140 in the back and a 120 at the rear. I'm just gonna use this fan at the top. We're, we're not gonna use the uh, the other fan that I was originally gonna use, um, it's, which is also 140. We're just gonna relocate this one to the top of the case when we're ready for it. So let's remove it for now. And it looks like you can mount up to a 360 millimeter rad at the front here, because we do have uh, mounting strips that pretty much span the entire height of the case. So yeah, definitely up to a 360 or a 280, uh, which is what we're installing. Fan down! It's worth noting that these are Dynamic X2 GP fans. So this is GP14, that's GP12, and they do terminate to a single three pin. Three pin non-PWM fan connector. You gotta get Fractal's fancy Venturi fans if you want that. At the front of the power supply shroud, you've got these removable plates. It looks like there's two pieces here, so you can remove as much as you need if you wanted to make room for additional fans or thicker radiators, uh, particularly longer radiators that are gonna, um, you know, need more clearance than what's available right here, uh, which we probably won't need because it's just a 240, I'm sorry, a 280. Uh, should be able to fit no problem, but nice option to have there. We've also got some ventilation on this part of the shroud so the, the power supply can breathe a little bit better. Uh, typically, 
ideally you're gonna wanna mount the fan downward anyway so that you know you get the dust filtration. But that said, the unit will probably still stay a little bit cooler if it's got a little bit of ventilation at the top, even if your fan isn't facing it. Seven expansion slots, pre-installed standoffs. Looks like we got support for up to EATX motherboards in here. Plenty of large cutouts and black rubber grommets all around the motherboard so that we can have really nice cable management when all is said and done. Geronimo! And we've got that raised middle standoff that makes mounting the board super easy. Pre-installed IO shield on this motherboard is very nice. Very, very nice. I'm glad that's becoming a trend. About time if you ask me. Now we can mount the radiator to the case. Boom. I'm gonna go ahead and push these fan cables through the top routing hole of the case. That's pretty much the only real spot you can route these front fan cables through without really being seen. And once they're through enough, we can just place the rad and screw her down. Looks like the radiator barely fits here height-wise. If it was any longer, maybe like two centimeters longer, we'd have to remove one of those modular plates on the PSU shroud that we just looked at. Oof, this build's already looking really good, guys. I think Mike's gonna like it. There's almost no point in doing a reaction portion with Mike, though, because he's, uh, he's not the most expressive kind of guy. He's about as animated as a corpse. You'd probably see a bigger reaction out of me, honestly, and it's not even my system, so. Screw you, Mike. You're bad for quick bait. And that's eight. Screwed in all eight screws, because I'm an overachiever. Time to screw down the motherboard, which in my opinion is one of the more boring and tedious tasks when building a PC. So let's jump ahead. One thing I'd like to point out really quick is that Fractal's included a little uh, cable management hook. You can just barely see it back there. It's super thin, but this is perfect for managing your rear fan cable. You can kind of just hook it around like so. There, now, now the cable won't like droop down, start hanging over this edge and get in the way of stuff. So a uh, nice little attention to detail there. I do appreciate little touches like that. Before I remove the top panel, here's a quick look at the front I.O. We've got a reset button, mic and headphone jacks, USB type C, power button, nice click there, two USB 2 and two USB 3. Popping the top panel should be as easy as, wow, that was super easy. More push pins, push pin design is amazing. More sound damping material. I love how easy that came off. Under the hood, we've got a removable dust filter, which I think is a smart design, keeping it separate from the physical top panel. Uh, just keeps it a bit more invisible. You don't really see it or notice it when it's underneath. And I just think it looks pretty clean. To remove it, you lift this up slightly and then pull it and it just comes right out. Now we can mount this 140 millimeter fan. I'm thinking we'll set it as exhaust, cable facing the back. If you're gonna be mounting fans at the top of your case, I generally recommend that you thread the fan cables through the appropriate grommets before you mount the fan just makes it a whole lot easier. At the top of the case, you've got room for up to a 240 or 280 millimeter AIO. There will be no triple fan or triple rad business here. All right, we're ready to put the dust filter back on and the ventilated top panel. Done, super easy. Before we install the power supply, I wanted to look at the right side of the case uh, behind the motherboard tray just to see what we've got going on here. For starters, we've got a nice uh, cutout for our CPU cooler, generously sized, uh, along with uh, plenty of tie down points and Velcro straps that Fractal's included on the right and left side here. Looks like Fractal's added a few plastic cable guides so that you can keep your cables nice and straight. There's one, two, three. And these uh, these cables kind of lead us down to the bottom here where we'll find a drive cage uh, that supports two, two and a half inch or two, three and a half inch drives. Each of these trays is held in place by a single thumb screw, so very easy to remove and replace. Uh, and you can also slide this drive cage uh, pretty far back, actually. It's on these rails, these flexible mounting strips, uh, so you can actually mount this all the way to this point. So just in front of, you know, a fairly short power supply, uh, which would give you plenty of room for a thicker radiator, push-pull configurations while still being able to install a couple drives down there. Uh, you can remove this drive cage completely if you want to as well. You've got two two and a half inch trays. These are probably gonna be for SSDs most likely. You can also relocate these to the top of the power supply basement on the other side of the case if you want to. And we've got plenty of room for longer ATX power supplies and all their cables uh, along with these uh, rubber pads to reduce noise and vibration. We're gonna mount it to this removable bracket here, two thumb screws that we must remove. All right, the bracket's on there nice and secure. Let's go ahead and figure out which cables we'll need for the build. Uh, of course, we need our CPU. Now, is this a single? So, because we actually have an eight pin. Remember, we have an eight pin and a four pin power connector for our CPU on this motherboard. So we're gonna wanna make sure that we have enough cables for that. Although we may not have two cables. Oh, we do. Awesome, I'm glad this power supply comes with two. I probably should have checked that beforehand, but you know, I suck, so. Uh, we do have enough though. We've got two power supply cables. We probably only need one of them because it terminates to two eight pin connectors, which is gonna be 
uh, adequate for our GPU. And then we've got, I'm just gonna pre-wire both SATA cables actually, because I'm not exactly sure how many drives Mike's gonna wire up and, uh, and where they're gonna be located, where he's gonna choose to locate them. So just to be safe, we'll do both and no one likes Molex. All right, let's pass them on through. Power supply's in now, and we've got our two CPU cables that I'm gonna hook up next. We've got the eight pin, and actually they're both eight pin, but we're only gonna be using uh, one of the four pins on one of the cables. I also remember that our Asia Horse sleeved extension kit only includes a single eight pin extension for the CPU. So I'm just not gonna use it. That way, both of these cables stay uniform and uh, we don't have to deal with any excess cabling on this side of the case. Plus these cables are wedged way into the corner of the case anyway, where you don't really see them much. So let's go ahead and route these guys, push them through here. I like to just push them almost all the way through. Just give me a lot of excess cable to work with on the other side. All right, the cables are through, ready to go in, but I just noticed something. When when we installed the power supply and I, I shifted it in, it actually pushed this rubber grommet out. Uh, let me try to undo, I'm just gonna undo the, the power supply so I can fix that grommet. Okay, grommet was fixed relatively easily and I'm gonna slide this back in. There we go, perfect. So not a huge deal there, you just gotta make sure that when you're sliding in your power supply in this case that uh, you're not actually uh, pushing out this, this rubber grommet at the same time. Time for our CPU cables, I will be right back because you can't really see what I'm doing here anyway. Here are the little guys for things like power and reset, hard drive and power LED. Although it looks like we don't have a hard drive LED on this case, which is totally fine with me. This is also yet another part of PC building that is hard to show on camera. We've got USB 2.0 here, which reminds me that I never plugged in the cables for our AIO, for the, the water block pump. Uh, we, need, we need another USB 2.0 cable that goes from the pump to the motherboard so that our AIO can interface with NZXT's CAM software. Say what you will about CAM, it does do some nifty things, particularly when you have supported NZXT devices or components in your build. And I'll route that to the AIO off camera where you can't see it. Don't worry, it's, it's not that interesting. Oh my God, are you serious? That is the craziest thing that just happened. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, just joking with you. Right, cable management's complete. What do I think about it? Uh, at least on this side of the case, uh, there are some things to note. Uh, for starters, uh, I do like how many tie down points there are. It seems like, you know, I was never, uh, I never encountered a, a moment where I was like, oh, I wish there was a tie down point here and there wasn't. They seem to be pretty much spaced out evenly across the, uh, the motherboard tray. As usual, I stuffed a lot of the excess cables underneath the power supply shroud out of sight, although it is getting pretty cramped down here. So uh, I feel like you probably wouldn't have much room to, to stash excess cabling if you did want to move uh, that, that hard drive cage over uh, even a tad, I think it would get pretty tight. But if you have good cable management skills and you plan things out, you should be fine. The one main gripe that I had back here were these plastic cable channels that kept popping off every time I would, well, not every time, but a good chunk of the time, I'd say about a third of the time when I would go to pull one of these Velcro straps, you know, I'd pull it tight because you want to clamp down the cables as much as possible so the side panel fits on, uh, the, the whole channel would just pop off, maybe about a third of the time, like I said, uh, which was definitely annoying. You have to pop it back in place and then you have to be sort of gentle with how you, uh, you know, strap in the Velcro. So I feel like these definitely need to be reinforced in the future. The other thing is that they don't always work the way that they're intended. Like, you know, they're, they're all straight. They're, they're all gonna uh, try to have you route the cables in a straight fashion, because that's how they're designed. But not all the cables can actually route that straight. Uh, for example, take this USB uh, 3.0 cable. There's actually two cables here, but it's coming out of the grommet, which is really close uh, to the channel itself. So, and it's too thick of a cable to really make a sharp enough turn to go straight the whole way. So you can see that this part of the cable is not actually in the channel, it's resting on top of the channel, um, which uh, which is obviously not the way it's intended to be used. So like I said, it, it works most of the time, but there are instances where these channels can kind of get in the way with, uh, with your routing. There's really nothing else too unique back here that warrants praise or criticism, but overall, apart from the cable channel, it was a pretty pleasant experience. With that said though, this puppy is ready to launch. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on the rest of the panels here, get it all nice and neat, while you guys sit back, relax, and enjoy the montage.
right, my dudes, the build's done. What do you guys think? Let me know. I, I really like it. Also, you're probably wondering uh, or thinking, Kyle, you, you hypocrite. You said that you were gonna do either no RGB or just plain white, and here you are decking the whole system out in red. What's up with that? Let me explain. I tried to do white. I tried to do white everything, but the whites don't match between the various components. Like the white on the pump, the NZXT cooler, is very accurate. It looks it looks clean, it looks white. Uh, the white on the Asus products, however, is very blue looking. So when they're side by side, especially on camera, it looks like they're two completely different colors. So I didn't want to use that for the B-roll. So here we are with red. Of course, Mike can change it to whatever the heck he wants, but he's probably not gonna change it. He doesn't care. Now, I can't confirm this at all. It's purely speculation, but one reason why the Asus products might look so blue, like why their, their white LED setting looks so blue is because I am using uh, an older version of Aura Sync. That's because the download page for the current version on Asus's website is currently down, and I can't find any good links for the current version elsewhere, so I'm using an old version of Aura Sync. So maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. If I updated to the new one, then maybe it would look a bit more accurate. But anyway, Anyway, red is looking good for now. Um, also, don't be fooled by the camera. It looks like the top and bottom of this this water block is bluish, at least to me right now, uh, but it's not. All right, there you go. Okay, it looks, it looks more like that in person. It looks good. Also, it's worth noting that even though we didn't end up using the cable mod uh, vertical you know, GPU bracket, our clearance for the GPU is still very slim. We have about, I'd say, one to two centimeters between the end of the shroud and the front fan here on the radiator. So just bear that in mind with the Define 7 Compact. If you're gonna be using a longer GPU, make sure that it fits and account for any you know radiators and fans that you're gonna be putting at the front of the case because it is compact for an ATX mid tower. Let's talk about the sag. So I don't know, it doesn't like I don't know if I'm just walking in a room, I'm looking at it, glancing at it. I don't really see much sag. If you're really trying to stare it down and, and figure it out, then you can tell that there's a little bit of sag here. We got we can do a test here. Let's verify that. Uh, shut up, phone. God, yeah, I'm drinking wine. Hell yeah. Uh, you can see that the uh, the level the level cannot be fooled. So. Uh, right here on the power supply shroud, we are super level. It's all looking good there. Put it up on the graphics card and you can see that we're just, we got a little bit of sag. Not a whole lot, but it's there. I gotta say, I really love how this AIO looks. The water block is just, uh, it looks super sexy. NZXT totally killed it. I just wish it wasn't so damn expensive. This is like one of the most expensive AIOs on the market right now, um, but, but gosh, it looks really good. Also, this memory looks fantastic. This is my first time using these ballistics modules as well. And if you're not interested in RGB, you're just looking for a stealthy vibe, uh, these sticks look really nice in person up close and uh, I'm really surprised that they're not more popular. So again, links to all this stuff in the description below in case you're interested. Right now the system's idling and you can tell it's, it's super quiet. Here, I'll put my mic up close. Can you hear that? So it, it's really quiet. 30 and 31 degrees C on the CPU and GPU respectively. But there's the system. I really like it. I'm sure Mike will dig it and we'll get lots of use out of it. And, uh, and maybe maybe he can play some games with me finally. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the Define 7 Compact. Uh, it's not a perfect case by any stretch. It's not super innovative. It's not groundbreaking, but it works. It's using a tried and true formula. And uh, you know, I don't really have much to complain about it. Uh, just little nitpicks here and there. But overall, nice job, Fractal. And nice job you for making it to the end of this video. If you guys enjoyed the video, toss a like before you go. It really helps me with the algorithm. It really, really helps me. So please toss a like before you head out. Also subscribe, we've got a lot of stuff coming up. Um, I know that it seems like I've completely abandoned the project entirely, but I guarantee you uh, I am still working and I'm still planning to finish Prometheus. Prometheus is going to get done one way or another. It just might take a little while. It's a beast. It, it'll be worth it. So stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that when it's finally here. Thanks again for watching. Have a good one. And I'll see y'all in the next video.